Hey guys, Dr. Betts here with another fantastic organic chemistry video. And today we're going to talk about introduction to general chemistry. Now I'm not going to go through all of general chemistry because that would be crazy. That's a year of your life. You should have learned it then. I hope you remember most of it now. It's very, very important for organic chemistry. I'm going to hit some of the high notes that you really have to know. I'm not going to go deep. You're going to have to go deep into your general chemistry notes to figure all this stuff out. But I am going to talk about the high points, some stuff you really, really, really should review if you don't remember your general chemistry work. All right. First things first, an atom. An atom has a dense, positively charged nucleus surrounded by a cloud of electrons. That's true. The densely charged nucleus is surrounded by electrons. There you go. Protons are in the nucleus. They're positive. Electrons surround the nucleus. They're negative. They're out there somewhere. We don't know where. Now, we do know the probability of where they should exist. Those are called orbitals and shells. Shells are those things that we, you know, called quanta. Uh, they are, sorry, they're, quant pardon me, they're quantized. You have the first shell, second shell, third shell, fourth shell, and so on. And inside of these shells are orbitals. And orbitals are literally predictions of where electrons should be because you can't actually know where electrons are, okay? So they're predictions of where electrons should be. Now, remember from your general chemistry, there are two types. There are S orbitals. And there are, oh, sorry, there's more than two, pardon me. There's S orbitals and there's P orbitals. Now, S orbitals, if you don't remember, are, let me get a pen here, are spherical. They are spheres. Now, I drew a circle because, you know, I can't really draw a sphere very well. S orbitals are circles. P orbitals, however, are dumbbell shape. And remember, there are three of them. PX, PY, and let's not forget PZ or PZ. There you go. Where PZ is going towards us and away from us. Now these are the uh, the two most common orbitals we encounter in organic chemistry because carbon has these two orbitals. But there are others. There are Ds and there are Fs, right? You have to know about those. I'm not going to go over them right now, but you do have to know about them. So make sure... You review your general chemistry. Here's some nicer drawings the book gave us. Make sure you review your general chemistry to understand what these orbitals look like and how they work. Okay. The next thing, isotopes. Isotopes are atoms that have the same atomic number. So here we have carbon. They both have the atomic number six. So these are the same element. Now notice they have different numbers here. These numbers are mass numbers. Now, mass numbers are not to be confused with atomic mass. It's not the same thing. Atomic mass is a weighted average of all the naturally abundant, naturally occurring isotopes using their percentage abundance in nature. That's an atomic mass, so it's a weighted average. Mass numbers are the numbers of protons plus numbers of neutrons in the nucleus. All right? Now... For this particular one here, we have six protons and a mass number is 12. So the number of neutrons has to be six because remember mass number is protons plus neutrons. So it's going to be six from here plus six from here equals, oops, I'm off the page here, sorry. Sorry about that. So this six goes here, and that six goes there, there we go, equals 12, and that's the number that's up here. Okay, six plus six equals 12. Now, it's a little dark in here, guys, sorry about that. Um, now, for this one here, it's the mass number is 14, Number of protons is six. So the number of neutrons is anyone? Anyone? Eight. Number of neutrons is eight. So there's eight neutrons in a C14 nucleus. And that's how it works. Now, in general, in organic chemistry, the most common isotopes you're going to deal with are carbon 13 and four, carbon 12, 13, and 14. You see those sometimes. But by far the most common one you deal with is hydrogen, H1 and H2. Now, H1 is called tritium, or pardon me, H1 is called hydrogen. H2 is called deuterium. 
and it is commonly abbreviated capital D. So whenever you see a capital D in organic chemistry, that's deuterium. That is not some weird uh, atom that you can't find on the periodic table. It's deuterium. It's the, it's the element of hydrogen, sorry, the isotope of hydrogen with a mass number of two. Okay? So remember this one. It's going to come up uh, quite a few times in this class. So kind of remember that one, that hydrogen, H1 is hydrogen, H2 is deuterium, and H2 is just is this hydrogen with an extra neutron. That's all it is. And it's sometimes used in studies. Okay? Now, when we talk about bonding, which is what this class is primarily going to focus on, is bonding and how, and how atoms behave when they're bonded, how they form bonds, all this kind of stuff, we need to really focus on these things called valence electrons. Now, there's two types of electrons. There's core electrons and valence electrons. The core electrons are below the valence electrons closer to the nucleus. They're not that exciting because they don't do much. Okay, They have to be there, but they just don't do a lot. So we're going to focus mostly on the valence electrons. And these are the electrons that are in the outermost shell of an atom. They're the ones that are out there in the valence shell doing their business. They make bonds, they break bonds, they do all kinds of stuff out there. That's the interesting stuff. And that's what we're going to focus on in this class. Okay? The valence electrons, where they are, what they do, why they do it, is kind of what this class focuses on. Now, here you can see what's called electron configuration. Okay? Hydrogen, 1s1. Now, if that is not familiar to you, if that is completely foreign to you, you're in a little bit of trouble, okay? You really have to understand uh, electron configuration very, very well. It's very simple, but you have to understand it, and this class is not going to go into it, okay? I assume you already know it. I'm assuming everyone in this class can do this. 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, or 2px1, 2py1, something like that is fine. I'm assuming all of you can do it, and all of you understand why, Carbon has four valence electrons. I'm assuming all of you can look at the periodic table and say carbon has four, oxygen has six, chlorine has seven, uh, neon has eight, xenon has eight, um, sulfur has six, nitrogen has five. I'm assuming all of you can look at the periodic table and just do that without knowing the electron configuration because it's in the group number. All right. If you can't do that, maybe talk to me uh, out of class somewhere on, on Blackboard Collaborate or whatever. And we'll get that straightened out. But in class, we are not going to take time to go over that because it's just uh, it's fundamental from general chemistry. If you haven't learned it there, please let me know outside of class and we'll go over it together. Now, don't forget, these orbitals are in energy levels, right? They have particular energy levels. So the 1s orbital is the lowest energy orbital because it's the closest to the nucleus. The 2s is the second is the second highest energy level orbital. Why? Because it's one shell away from the nucleus, one shell away from the positive charge. Now notice, the two p orbitals are slightly higher in energy, so therefore they fill last. They don't fill first. And here's a couple of definitions you might want to remember from general chemistry: Aufbau principle and Hund's rule. Aufbau, Aufbau says that you fill the lowest energy orbitals first. Electrons always want to go close to the nucleus if they can, because that's where the protons are. That's where the attraction is. Hund's rule. Hund's rule states that when two or more orbitals of the same energy the have the same energy, electrons will go into different orbitals rather than pairing up. Okay? Electrons will not want to pair until they absolutely have to. Okay? And that's just how it goes. All right? So remember that from general chemistry. Electrons will not pair until they absolutely have to. Here we go our first foray into bonding. So I'm going to cut the video here. I'm going to try to keep these videos a little bit short for you guys because no one likes to watch an hour-long YouTube video. So I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to pick it back up at ionic bonding, and then we're going to keep talking about organic chemistry and uh, our review of general chemistry. All right, guys? So now with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon.